Now it's time for perspective for you. And ocean temperatures in the Great Barrier Reef are now the hottest they've been in at least 400 years. And that's an existential threat to the planet's unique natural wonder. Now that is according to new research that also says that without ambitious and rapid cuts to greenhouse gas emissions, we will witness the demise of the reef altogether. Now amid that desperate news, there is perhaps some hope. The race is on to create climate resilient coral before it's too late. Well, joining us now is Dr. Lena Bay, Research Programme Director for the Recovery, Adaptation and Restoration Programme at the Australian Institute of Marine Science. Thanks very much for joining us on the programme. First of all, let's talk generally about the state of the, the Great Barrier Reef. I mean, what kind of state is it in now compared to, for example, 100 years ago? Well, we here at the Australian Institute of Marine Science have been uh, studying the Great Barrier Reef for close to 50 years now. And we actually have the longest record of, uh, of coral cover on the Great Barrier Reef. So we've been monitoring the reef for, for 40 years. And what we've found is that coral cover can go up and down, up and down. That's the natural way of a reef. But in the last 15 years, we've seen very large changes from uh, very high to very low and then uh, recovery again. And so what that's telling us is that the reef is still resilient and it can still recover from disturbance. But we're, what we're really concerned about is the, the number of leaching events that we're seeing. We've seen five in, uh, in since 2015. And we are expecting many more, and so we're really worried about what that will do to our corals into the future. Yeah, I'm surprised to hear you talk about the recovery there. I mean, does it does it still recover to the level where it was before, or is, is there a, an overall general decline? So our scientists are looking at how individual reefs recover and whether they can come back to the same coral cover as previously. Um, coral reefs are very dynamic, and what we're seeing that while we are seeing a, a fantastic recovery on, on many of our reefs, that recovery is mostly um, governed by uh, the branching coral species. You can see some behind me here, but those are the faster corals that are also very sensitive to, uh, to bleaching and also crown of thorns uh, predation. So these starfish that love to eat uh, coral for dinner, uh, they particularly like these branching corals. So while the condition is good at the moment. We are concerned that that can quickly change. And we are seeing these disturbances really increase in frequency and, and intensity as well. And, and so, you know, over a few months uh, during a warm, warm summer, we can lose many thousands or millions of corals. And, that, and that's what we're really worried about. What would that mean if we were to lose those corals, not just for the corals themselves, but for the whole uh, underwater ecosystem? Well, coral reefs actually only cover a really small proportion of the of the surf of the bottom of of the ocean uh, of the of our oceans, but they're the home to about a quarter of all species on coral reefs. So while I'm particularly in love with corals, uh, many other people uh, appreciate other uh, species that would be lost. Uh, millions of people around the world rely on um, fish and other protein that they get from coral reefs. So for many people, it's a matter of life and death having healthy coral reefs on their doorstep. Is it all our fault? So there are many uh, uh, disturbances that are impacting coral reefs at the moment, but we all agree that climate change, human-induced climate change, is the biggest threat to coral reefs here in Australia and around the world. And without significant action on, on, on our global emissions and stabilising the world's climate, all coral reefs around the world are really facing an incredibly challenging uh, future. So that would be number one. Uh, we need to act on climate change. This is not a future threat for coral reefs. This is, uh, this is everyday life now, and it's a matter of uh, what we believe, scientists believe, really a matter of survival, uh, stabilising temperatures. But even if we do that, we know that we're committed to significant uh, additional warning, warming because of the uh, CO2 that's already in the atmosphere. And it's so it's this tough period of 30, 40 years that we're really focused on, on helping reefs uh, pass through, get through in the best way that they can.
I mentioned one other um, potential uh, you know, shine of light, I suppose. That's this idea of creating climate-resistant coral. What, what's that about? What's the theory behind that? So we here at Ames have been working in collaboration with uh, many other scientists in Australia and indeed around the world uh, around looking at whether there are um, uh, tools or methods that could be implemented on reefs to help them uh, resist the impacts of warming, uh, recover from the impacts of warming and adapt to the warming. And it doesn't take a scientist to realise that if temperatures ocean temperatures are increasing and corals don't like hot water, if you can help them cope with warmer water, then they're going to have a much better future. They will not bleach as much. They may not um, succumb or die following the bleaching because bleaching, a bleached coral is not a dead coral, but if the temperatures are high enough and the, and the heat wave um, persists for, for too long, then, then corals just can't make it through. So if we can help them become more temperature tolerant and then help those corals become more abundant on the reef, then, then clearly the future is better. And our models show that we can have a real benefit on the reef if we can achieve that. And could the science even get to the stage where the, uh, maybe I'm oversaying it, but the whole reef could be saved by that? I mean, how can you, you know, grow and spread that across the entire Great Barrier Reef? It doesn't sound uh, very practical. No, and, it, and, and it's not. I mean, the Great Barrier Reef is the size of Italy, so we're not trying to uh, to work on every single coral, uh, replace every single coral on the reef. But you can be smart about it. So we know that certain reefs are more connected than others. So working on those reefs, you can seed temperature, more temperature tolerant corals, and they will naturally spread. And that's precisely why we're talking about these uh, methods now and we're working so hard on developing them because if you can start these uh, methods now while there's still a lot of resilience in the system and many reefs are in very good condition, then the job is easier, it will be cheaper and we will have much better uh, results. So that is why we are so razor sharp focused on, on understanding corals better identifying those naturally heat tolerant corals and then working out how we can propagate them either through uh, conservation aquaculture other methods and then get them back out to the reef where they can then grow and and uh, and support all those uh, important species that live there finally just um quickly if you can because we're almost running out of time but how optimistic are you i mean uh, it's very difficult isn't it the, the the environmental cause if you like has been almost top of the news agenda for 20 years and yet things are starting to move but very slowly aren't they look it's something that uh, every scientist uh, will uh, talk about and it's certainly something that we feel very hard we do not want to see the great barrier reef and indeed other ecosystems around this world decline and 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 uh, and, and um uh, to, to really decline on our watch I think that I'm, I'm an optimistic person, but hope without action is futile. And what we need is action on climate change. We need research into these new methods. And then we need to be uh, uh, willing to test them and trial them on our reefs to, to really optimise them so that they can work the way that we want them to work. Great to talk to you on the programme today. Thanks very much for uh, taking the time to talk to us. Dr Lena Bay, Research Programme Director for the Recovery, Adaptation and Restoration Programme at the Australian Institute of Marine Science. Thanks very much.